I was, we were not thinking of the sentencing, and no, I really don't think that Hunter belongs in jail. Bennett Gershman is a former prosecutor. He's now a distinguished professor of law at Pace University. He joins me now. Good to have you on. I mean, first, I, I, often with cases like this, stories will mention what the maximum penalties are. Do you agree in this case that it is far more likely, especially given he's a first-time offender and the nature of these particular crimes, how seldom they're prosecuted individually, that he will re receive when sentenced a far lesser sentence? Oh, I, I think it's impossible uh, for the maximum sentence to be called 25 years. Now, typically, uh, when crimes are committed all part of the same event or occurrence, the punishments are overlap. They're not added onto each other, which is what the 25-year number does. So the maximum punishment really is, is 10 years. Uh, and uh, given the fact that he is a first-time offender, given the fact that the government made a plea deal with him not too long ago where he didn't send any time in jail, uh, it's, it's very, very likely that he will not receive uh, J jail or, or significant jail. Uh, uh, and I, I would say probation is very likely in accord with the uh, comments that this juror uh, expressed. The special counsel, David Weiss, gave brief comments uh, following the verdict, and he said that Hunter Biden, in his words, should be no more accountable than any other citizen convicted of, of the same crime here. Now, some question whether Trump, had he not been named Trump, would face the charges he faced in New York. And similarly, whether Biden, had he not been named Biden, would have been prosecuted for such charges, given how seldom these charges are prosecuted independently and not tied to another crime. I wonder, what's your answer to that question? You know, Jim, it's, it's hard to speculate on what the, the name mattered. Uh, I mean, how, you're correct. This type of a crime, false statements on, a, on an application for a gun license is seldom prosecuted. Uh, but um, the fact that this case was stood out, Republicans were complaining about the fact that he wasn't being prosecuted. Um, it, it, it's hard to know whether the name itself mattered. Uh, you know, and people will come to different conclusions about that. I, I, I don't know. I, I would say that the fact that this case did receive such high profile attention, uh, maybe the, the prosecution felt it would look like they were going political and, and, and yeah. not prosecuting. So it's hard to say. Listen, many of those same critics who were complaining he was not being prosecuted are still complaining today at his conviction, claiming somehow that it's a distraction. And Trump himself said this uh, from other alleged but not substantiated crimes by the Biden family. Uh, there will likely be an appeal in this case, do you think it's likely that he and his team, Hunter Biden and his team, will be successful on appeal? Yeah, you know, Jim, uh, most appellate courts, when they review cases, will frequently say that no trial is perfect. All trials have mistakes and errors. As I saw this case, and it went very rapidly, uh, I, I didn't see any significant issue that might matter uh, on appeal. It seemed that the evidence by the prosecution went smoothly. It seemed that the defense put in their case. Uh, I, I didn't really see any significant problems with, with the case itself. And so I think, well, there will very likely be an appeal. I, I, my, my opinion is an appeal is a long shot. I, I didn't see anything significant that would warrant the appellate court vacating uh, this conviction. Bennett Kirschman, thanks so much. I mean, what a remarkable couple of weeks. Two firsts, a former president, current candidate for president charged with felonies, and now a sitting president's son charged with felonies, or convicted, I should say, of felonies as well. Thanks so much for joining. Still to come this hour, five years.